Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura, and today I am doing another Manga Mondays recommendation video. Today I'm going to talk about some mysteries that I think you might like to read. Um, this isn't, of course, going to be exhaustive, because as I was looking around my room, I realized there's a heck of a lot of mysteries. Um, and the other thing that I realized is I don't read mysteries very often. Um, so for the last two weeks since the last video, I've basically been reading mysteries, trying to find some uh, good titles or remind myself of some old titles um, that I wanted to recommend here. So I certainly haven't read that many mysteries, and I was surprised by that. Um, I am actually finding doing this project that um, there are a lot of areas that I have been kind of just not reading in. Um, I have read in the past, and I do pick up occasionally, but I feel like I haven't been reading in them as much as I would like, and uh, Mysteries is one of them, because I actually really like to read Mysteries. Um, I like not knowing how things are going to work out and try and think about how things are going to go as you're reading um, and just try and put all the pieces together. Um, so there's lots of mysteries to choose from, but I'm going to show you a handful that I have enjoyed. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a strange recommendations, I think. I have a feeling that these are more just uh, personal taste recommendations rather than things I think everybody will like. Um, but uh, anyway, I thought I would share that with you today anyway. Um, so let's see what I've got. Uh, the first recommendation I have for you is actually an out-of-print title, but I think it is well worth picking up if you ever see it somewhere at like a second-hand book sale or whatever, um, and that are the Kindaichi Case Files. This one in particular is called The Mummy's Curse, but um, there are a number of titles that were released or a number of volumes in this series I have. Uh, up to volume 17. I'm missing a few in the middle. I haven't read the complete series, but what is really great about this is that each volume seems to be a self-contained story, and so it's not um, really short stories, it's like a full volume, and so some of them are quite sizable. Um, I've read a few reviews, and a lot of people were saying that this uh, volume 2, The Mummy's Curse, is actually the best one in the series, so I'm really glad that I have it, and it really was quite good. Um, it has a very Agatha Christie-like uh, discussion, lead-up, and sort of trick to the entire uh, story. So um, it is quite fun trying to figure out uh, how things were working out, and they do kind of solve it, and um, it is quite quite entertaining. The characters are really interesting. Um, certainly, you know, uh, Kindaichi and his girlfriend um, continue into a number of different volumes, but um, the the main cast of uh, whoever is getting murdered in that story is going to change from volume to volume. But I had a lot of fun reading a handful of these this week, and um, I definitely would recommend checking them out if you ever come across them. They don't look like the most attractive or appealing manga, but they're actually quite entertaining, especially if you're into murder mysteries. The next title I want to recommend to you um, has recently been in print, so I don't know if it's still in print now. I didn't actually check before making this video, but this is Usubora, the story of a novelist by Asumiko Nakamura. This is a mature title, so um, there are some sort of explicit scenes, I think, in it, so you might want to be aware of that, I guess, if you're going to pick this up. Um, but this is a really good title, and it's got a really interesting mystery that really makes you think after this, the volume is over, after the story is over. Um, and certainly some of the um, way things uh, are wound up together are quite subtle, and so there are a lot of um, pieces to unravel in this story. Um, this is basically the story about a young woman who uh, you see on the very first page um, plunging to her death off of a building. Uh, you can see her here. And um, basically you learn that she is involved somehow with a novelist who is working on his uh, kind of masterpiece. And um, another woman shows up who seems to be kind of straight out of his novel or seems to be related in some way to um, his work as well as maybe possibly to this other woman's uh, demise. And so you are unraveling, trying to figure out how all of the pieces fit together. I think you find out kind of rather early um, some of the main plot points, so I don't want to get into it. Um, but uh, it is a really good mystery, as well as a really um, kind of art house style uh, novel. 
um, if you will. So it's, it, I actually think it's well written, it's beautifully illustrated, and as well as a really good mystery. So, um, and, it, and it begs to be read over, so even after you've read it, there's lots of um, pieces that you probably didn't see at the beginning that you would want to see again, uh, maybe in the second reading. So I think this is a, actually a really worthwhile pickup, and you should definitely check it out if you can still get your hands on it. The next title is probably out of print. Um, again, I haven't looked. This one is Old Boy by Garan Tsuchiya and Nobuaki Minegishi. Um, this is such a good story. It is more of a thriller um, than a mystery, but there is a heavy mystery aspect to it. Um, and you are kind of following the main character as he's trying to figure out what has happened to him. Basically, near the very beginning of this manga, he's being released from um, being imprisoned. He doesn't know who's imprisoned him. He doesn't know why he's been imprisoned. He was innocent as far as he knows. So he's been completely isolated and for an un unknown reason. And now he's being released. And now he's, of course, trying to unravel the mystery of why and trying to kind of gain revenge for what has happened to him. Um, I think it's really great. I love the story in it. and It has a very subtle ending, which I think is just like spot-on perfect. So I really, really love this story, and I hope that you have a chance to pick it up. It's not terribly long, um, but it is Dark Horse, so it probably had a slightly smaller print run, so definitely check it out if you have a chance. Another out-of-print title, but this one's only four volumes long, so you might want to pick it up if you see it at a sale somewhere. This is Zodiac P.I. by Natsumi Ando. This is a shoujo manga. I really wanted to get some other demographics in here because I think it could be really heavily seinen because the seinen mysteries are really, I think, my favorites. Um, but this is a very cute, fun story. It's uh, basically a magical girl-like story. She doesn't actually transform herself, but she does have the ability to call on astrological signs who uh, pop out of her magical ring and who give her clues as to how to solve certain crimes. Um, so this girl, who is 13, I think, um, or, you know, in junior high school, actually uh, works as a super secret undercover uh, detective. Um, early on in the story, a boy comes to school that she actually knew in the past, and it turns out that he's just returned from the States. Uh, he's gotten some advanced degree in criminal psychology as a junior high student, and uh, he is the son, I think, of the chief of police or something like that. No, she's the daughter of the police, some police officer. Um, at any rate, they end up kind of joining together and, and uh, taking down bad guys, um, but also while using uh, the Zodiac to help her. Um, it's really cute. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but it is a very young demographic, um, and it is very unbelievable, I think, uh, at least in the situation of the young boy with his advanced degree and the fact that he's going back to uh, junior high school to finish his schooling. Like, it's just, it seems a little bit odd. Um, yeah, not not discounting the fantasy aspects at all. Um, but it's fun, and it's delightful to read, and it's really um, upbeat and just uh, really adorably illustrated. You can see some of the, the astrological signs. There are these really uh, cute, kind of fairy-like creatures very light characters. Um, it really reminds me of something like Little Snow Fairy Sugar or um, Shugo Chara are both really similar titles to this one. Um, and this also feels a little bit maybe like Saint Tail because of the, uh, you know, investigation aspects. So there's lots of uh, stories that are really good that are really similar to this one. Um, if you're into really upbeat 90s shoujo manga that's aimed at like a middle grade age, then you should check this one out, and it's a lot of fun. Another title, this one is recently out of print, so if you want, you can pick up the last volume, which is what I have done. This is Young Miss Holmes by Karu Shintani. Um, unfortunately, the first two volumes are at least unavailable for me to pick up. Um, they might be available for you, but um, I do have this final volume. I picked this up uh, recently, uh, maybe in like October from the public library, and read it there, and it was wonderful. It was one of the best things I read last year. I don't think it made my top ten, but it was really, really great. Um, this is basically the story about the niece of Sherlock Holmes, and um, she um, 
just helps to investigate or she's very tenacious and wants to solve the crimes before Sherlock Holmes does. Um, she's a very precocious type child and she's a very intelligent child. Um, normally this kind of story would really irritate me and I don't really like manga set in uh, England. This one I really enjoyed quite a lot and I really like the investigation and I really like how she aids Sherlock Holmes in solving crimes. Um, or he's already known as someone with uh, great powers of perception and he can solve crimes on his own already so you don't really need to have a sidekick like this. Um, so the direction that this story comes from is that she is almost competing with him and she wants to solve the crime before he does and they often end up meeting at the place, um, you know, both coming to the conclusion but both coming to that conclusion in a different way. It's really enjoyable. The art in it is wonderful. Um, and I would highly recommend it. It's only three um, omnibus volumes. Um, they're published by Seven Seas, so they actually have a really nice binding on them. They're not going to like totally fall apart after you read, read them once. Um, so yeah, I really um, am happy to have this one volume. I'm looking forward to collecting the rest, and uh, it is definitely a worthwhile mystery. The next title that I'm going to show you is also out of print from Tokyo Pop. Um, and it is from a genre that I don't think I've ever recommended on this channel before. Maybe I'll do a recommendation solely for uh, Yaoi Manga at some point, but um, this is Fake by Sanami Mato. Um, Sanami Mato had quite a lot of titles that came out in the like early 2000s, and I haven't seen her name much since then. But um, both my sister and I really like Sanami Mato. She's just got really fun stories and likable characters. Um, this is a pretty good title. This is a story about two police officers um, who work in New York City. Uh, one of the characters happens to be half Japanese. This is actually the blonde character, which is kind of funny. Um, he is questioning his uh, sexual orientation um, because he is being pursued by the character with the black hair who is his partner, um, who is bisexual and so has fallen in love with his partner. Um, and so they have a lot of uh, back and forth about that. Um, it's really good of a story and it's really good character development and it's good relationship development and it feels natural. It, it doesn't feel forced. Um, so I really, really appreciate this story. The mysteries in it are quite good as well. Um, some of them are quite gruesome. Some of them are, um, you know, fairly kind of calm, kind of murder she wrote-esque, um, but some of them are really quite grisly and um, they do solve them relatively easily. Like I think maybe the most a story arc will last is about four chapters before they solve a situation um, because the focus really is on the relationship over the, the mysteries, but I think the mysteries are actually quite good. This is just a lot of fun to read. The characters are really likable. Um, they have a lot of um, good conversations. Um, that's really uh, highly comedic. If you've read other Tsunami Mato titles, then you would also really appreciate this a little bit more because there are characters that reappear even from other series. So um, it's just a really fun, good yaoi series. And it also has really good mystery elements to it. So uh, definitely if you're a yaoi reader, uh, you should check this one out. Uh, the next title that I want to recommend is from Jiro Taniguchi. This is The Quest for the Missing Girl. Um, this is published by Fanfare Ponentmon. I recently purchased this, but it might be harder to find, so um, if you are still able to get it, I would say check it out. Um, this is basically the story about a um, mountain climber who in the past had a best friend who he lost on a climb and now has kind of taken over the role of protector of his family. Um, the daughter of this man who has passed away has gone missing in Tokyo and the mother is of course beside herself. She doesn't know what has happened to her daughter. So this mountaineer comes down from the mountain and he goes into Tokyo to look for her because that is his sort of duty to his, his friend. Um, it's a pretty good story, but it's it really is mostly about the introspection of the main character and what his friend meant to him and how uh, he needs to resolve his feelings, how, ne how he needs to um, kind of climb over them in a way. Um, I thought it was really great. Um, 
the illustration in it, of course, is beautiful because it's Joe Taniguchi. He definitely has more of a realistic approach to his illustrations than some other manga that you would read. Um, it is more of a mature title, so there are some more mature themes in this title, um, but I really thought it was worth reading. Uh, it's not his best work, but it's definitely a worthwhile title, and I really thoroughly enjoyed reading it when I did this week. Uh, so the last title that I'm going to show you, I'm not entirely sure this is something that everyone will enjoy, but it certainly is a title that I think was literally written and like my name was signed as like inspiration for because uh, these are all the things that I want to read about in manga. Uh, it's it's like my perfect, my perfect little package of a thing. Um, and that is Master Keaton by Naoki Urasawa, Hokusai Katsushika, and Takashi Nagasaki. Uh, this is so wonderful. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I've only read the first two volumes. I've only just started it about three days ago, uh, so I am just still reading it. Uh, but the first two volumes were wonderful, and it was really great. Um, I wanted to recommend Naoki Urasawa anyway on this list, um, because um, if you've read Monster, or 20th Century Boys, or Pluto, like all of his big popular works that have been translated into English, um, our mystery series, and this is no exception. This one is a little bit different than those three in that the stories themselves are all um, short, uh, so they're actually extremely short. Um, unlike, you know, Monster, where it it uh, is a long story arc across the entire series, this one, the stories are uh, just pages long. Um, but he, um, Master Keaton, is a archaeology instructor. I don't think he's quite a professor, um, but he works as an ar archaeology professor at a college. He doesn't make a lot of money, and so his side job is working as an insurance investigator. Um, and he ends up going out to different um, archaeological sites, as well as other types of um, insurance claims. As the story progresses, it's less archaeology-based and sort of just insurance in general, um, but uh, he goes out and investigates um, these different uh, activities to make sure that, um, you know, everything is okay with the claim or, you know, find, a, you know, a lost element that has gone missing or um, you know, bring some person to justice or, you know, whatever. Um, he, because of his personality of being such a kind of quiet and aloof and dreamy character, or dream-like, yeah, dreamy character, um, he ends up going to, uh, or he ends up uh, enlisting in the army, and so he has a lot of army background, and he ends up becoming a specialist in um, survival techniques, and so he ends up using his archaeology knowledge and skills and develops, um, you know, small tools and weapons without uh, sort of any basis, um, sort of like you would think of on MacGyver. And so I was thinking of this when I was reading it, that this is really a crossover between um, Indiana Jones and MacGyver, but less explosive. Um, it is more of a quiet story. Um, it is more of a character-based story, um, but there are lots of little um, elements of archaeology and investigation and um, just um, pieces of history and I think this is well researched, um, it's well translated. The translator and English adaptation is by Puki Rolf, so really good translation. Um, you know, talking about art, art and archaeology, you know, historical terms and facts and uh, all of those sort of aspects, I suspect is not as easy to translate or to like move into uh, a natural language in English. Um, the illustration is really beautiful. There's quite a lot of color pages in it. Um, it is Naoki Urasawa's illustration style. Um, it is very text heavy as you can see, so it is quite a slow read. Um, you know, the book probably took me two hours to read a volume, which is unheard of for me, so um, yeah, I can't sing the praises of this series highly enough. I have some of the anime and I watched it years and years ago and I enjoyed it, but I didn't expect to like be like totally in love with this title when I was reading it. So I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. There's quite a lot of it. There's about 12 volumes out um, and hopefully still in print. It is published by Viz, so they usually have a stronger print run. Um, so uh, definitely if it sounds like something that you would be into, I would say check it out. Um, 
I know this one isn't for everyone though, and but I think that Naoki Urasawa does have a pretty good range of titles that are available in English that you would probably find something in his titles that you would like, and I definitely would recommend him as a good source of a mystery to go to. Uh, the, this one so far is my favorite. So these are my recommendations for mysteries. There's tons. I'm sure you can think of tons off the top of your head um, if you've read any, like Death Note and uh, Detective Conan and uh, BSI, Bureau of Supernatural Investigators, Clant School Detectives. Like there's so many. I could just like list them forever. So um, there's lots of mysteries. They're not normally my things that I read, but um, or like, they don't feel like it, but I really, really do enjoy them when I read them, obviously. Um, and there's, they're, they're in every demographic. Um, you know, I've got uh, Shonen, Josei, Seinen, Shoujo, Shonen, there's uh, Yaoi, which is Josei, um, Seinen, and Seinen, mostly Seinen. Um, but really, really good titles, and I definitely would recommend checking out some mysteries if you are interested. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, uh, certainly, if you have any recommendations for some good uh, mysteries in manga, I would love to hear about it. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye for now.